Saturday and happy Ramadan. I know you haven't seen me on here for a very long time and I do apologize for that. YouTube is not really my main um, platform. If you want to see more of me, just check out my Instagram. I'm pretty active over there. But this Ramadan in the nights, I've been watching some of my friends vlogging and I was like, this is pretty cool. I want to try something like that. So here I am. And this is gonna be my attempt to vlog a day in my weekend, a day of my life, a day in Ramadan, what it normally looks like. It's the blessed month and I'm so happy this month is here. It's going by way too fast. So I think let's just get into my typical day. So first things first, I wake up and I start to tidy up from the night before. So let's get to that now. Ta-ta! Okay, the living room is kind of okay. I see some crumbs on the carpet, so I'll just vacuum really quickly. Hi, hi, so now that everything is cleaned up, I swear I feel like this Ramadan, the majority of what I do is just clean up after my own mess somehow i don't know especially because my father-in-law is visiting so i feel i go more out like if it's just me and my husband we like kind of eat anything eat anywhere like we're very low-key but now it's more like a family vibe so i actually decorate the table and serve in like nice dinnerware and all that stuff so there's a lot more to clean up all the time anyway i get out of breath Whew. so quickly these days but what i wanted to say now i am in my prayer gown which probably looks shocking to some people but I think this is something that most Muslim women own in their wardrobe so it's something that you just pull on for prayer time it's not something I would ever go out with or anything like that but if it's prayer time it's just an easy go-to instead of having to think like oh I need a scarf and I need a top and I need a skirt and etc so you just pull it on for prayer time uh, mine is from Serenity Scarves. It's like this huge piece, but I don't know. I've, this is the brand I've always gone with, like I think since 2015 or 16. Um, but they're often out of stock. Uh, they're based in the US, but there's also other brands like Behind the Veil and um, Fashion Valet that you could look into if this is something you want to purchase. And it's actually not prayer time yet, but I pulled it on because one of my Ramadan resolutions for myself was hopefully when I wake up, to pray two units of voluntary prayer. It literally takes less than a minute. It's just about getting into that headspace and actually doing it. And I'm sure there's so many blessings in it. So if anybody wants to jump on that train with me, um, and other than that, I'm not just randomly hanging out in the nursery. It's just that this year I made it into like a prayer nook. So over here we have our prayer carpets i got them from kenza which is also a brand i've been loyally like purchasing from for years and years and years and each carpet has a story from the quran so this one something with olives and figs and this one with pomegranate and i really like them and they're like a little bit cushioned as well so they're very comfortable and just really good quality and then we also have a chair here because my father-in-law when he is here at night he would sit here and honestly sometimes i sit as well because i get tired more easily these days and then here we have a quran stand which we've never had in our life but our neighbor gave it to us and at first we're like what are we going to do with this but because qatar is in a partial lockdown so there's no night prayers in the mosque haytham actually stands here and leads the prayer so it's been very handy for him so he can have the book here um, and then he just this is where we pray and this is where i I'm going to pray now. I am taking care of my neighbor's cats, which makes me so happy because they are so cute. Yeah, do, 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 do. So now that prayers are done um, and I've all cleaned up, then um, before continuing with the rest of the day, 
I usually get on my Instagram and I try to get back to as many DMs as I possibly can. Uh, however, like if it if it passes like a one hour mark, then I I'm like okay, I you need to stop. So I wish I could get back to everybody. Um, that's not always possible, but I do try to be pretty responsive and um, respond as much as I can. So I am now going to take some time to get back to people and connect with you guys, and then continue the rest of the day. I made a highlight on my Instagram of Haytham and animals because he's literally terrified of like every single creature who's not human. I was just raised differently. <laughs> you say I was raised Someone might wrong. say you're raised wrong. <laughs> That's raised differently. So anyway, Haytham's watching the highlight for the first time. Come on. <sighs> just uncomfortable around them. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> How big I am? This thing that, <laughs> that is the question. Yes. Many people are asking me, why are you scared? I don't know. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> You're just scared. Yeah. And then here's Pilvi. Hi, Pilvi. Welcome to your first vlog. Hi. Oh. Another reason why I love you. Cats. <laughs> Just, I love my life and I love <laughs> cats right now. <laughs> Amazing. Haytham is on the poo poo duty. Yeah, you should stay away because. It's yeah, I'm toxic. going. I'm on top of the box, yeah? I'm on top of the box, yeah? What's he saying about you? What is he saying? Tell him. Tell him. What are you saying? Okay. Haytham actually works six days a week, so he In spent. <laughs> Yeah. You know, for a while, I used to think there was a garbage man in our building. Yeah. <laughs> I used to put garbage bags like behind the door, and then every day I would come home, they'd be gone. <laughs> and then one day it was still here, and I told Hate them like, the garbage man didn't come yet, and he's like, who? <laughs> it turns out Hate them is the garbage man. Oi, kasa tet piru. Kaid praegu, kas sa teid piru kaid? Oh yeah, just FYI, all animals speak Estonian, so that just that just happens. They're fluent, right? You're fluent. Ütle ja, ma tekin veidi piru kaid ja siis ma hakkame nii pärast sööma. Ja. Here's normally where I sit in between um, having things to do. I did a little photo shoot the other day with a photographer, so I uploaded the pictures on my drive and was editing them over here and then listening to some lectures as well. And now I'm gonna clean up what's remaining from the dining room. Uh, the tablecloth has loads of stains, so I'm gonna wash it today. And this thing always works like magic. I just put a little bit on the stain and then into the washing machine and they will be gone and it will be as good as new. This is not ending. <laughs> I need to clean the dining room. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come on. I don't know about you guys, but like we always somehow have laundry in the house. So because I'm gonna wash the tablecloth, I'm going around to see what else do I have of whites. And something that we always have is in the guest toilet. We have the one time usable towels. So already have all this for a load of whites and honestly why is the camera blue hello why are you blue that's weird it's not blue anymore so i've showered i got ready i have to go do the groceries uh to start preparing a thought. I actually prefer to order my groceries online, but because I'm making salmon today, that's something that I prefer to pick out on my own, not to have someone pick it out for me and deliver it. So I have to go to the grocery, so that will take a little bit of extra time. And honestly, vlogging this day is taking time. Like I'm way behind my normal schedule. 
uh, but that's okay. Uh, something that is very important for me in Ramadan and that's my promise to myself is to educate myself more about our faith because I think sometimes we forget that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. So um, my resolution is to get closer to the Quran, hopefully to understand it more uh, and to go more into depth, I guess, instead of just reading it and not being able to understand it, but actually um, getting to know it better. So uh, one of the things that I'm doing is listening to lectures. I think everybody has their own love language when it comes to God, like what makes you feel closest. But one of those things for me definitely is um, listening to different kinds of lectures from scholars who I enjoy listening to. So yeah, now is the time for some lecture time and then I'm gonna go do my groceries. So today when I'm recording this, it's the 12th day of Ramadan and now I am studying chapter Yusuf. So it's a story about the Prophet Yusuf. It's very, very interesting. So that is what I am studying today. And it's really nice to kind of listen to a lecture um, about the part of the Quran that you're gonna be reciting in the evening. So at night, like when I read it, it's kind of like, oh, okay, that's what this means. Or, oh, okay, oh, that's what was meant over here. So it kind of gives context instead of um, just, you know, listening to beautiful audio and not knowing what it means. So it's very, it's very beneficial. Um, I'll link some lectures down below that I've enjoyed listening to and that I find highly educational. So maybe you'll like them too. I don't cook every day. We had like an agreement that I cook like a couple of times a week and today is one of those days. I just threw on some, 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 some loungewear and this top and it's time to go because I am behind schedule. Uh, I'm sorry for the noise. I'm in the parking lot. Um, normally, like I said, I would do my groceries online, but I need to get a few stuff from the store myself. So I am just rushing there now. Okay, thank God, thank God, I'm on schedule. The grocery list was actually pretty short. I have most of the things at home, so I have some time to chat. So um, one of the things that I've learned during this Ramadan in the lectures that I've been watching and just over the time that I've been contemplating and stuff, and wait, someone just parked next to me, so I'm really shy. So let me just do this in a bit. Okay, he's gone now. It's so strange, right? Like I've been on social media for nearly 10 years and I still get really shy if like people <laughs> are around uh, anyway so I wanted to also share something from the lectures that I've been watching and things that I've been contemplating over um, in the past uh, what's it been 12 days and one of the things that really hit me was that if you feel hopelessness which I'm sure a lot of us feel at times right when we feel like does God really hear me does God really hear my prayers because sometimes in a moment of desperation like trust me I know um, you know your your problem whatever it is that you're going through has this power of making you feel like oh my god like i'm not being heard and i'm the only one who's suffering and it's just like this problem takes over your entire life as if like that is the center of the entire universe but we become neglectful to the fact that there's so many blessings around us um and it's easy to say that because i know when you're in the middle of your storm it's really hard to see outside of your situation it's really hard to see that light again um so i think a really beautiful and practical practice like instead of someone just telling you like come on be grateful it's easier said um than done obviously but a really nice practice um would be to think of your previous ramadan so think about what did you pray for last year or what did you pray for two years ago or three years ago or ten years ago so if i think of my own example oh my god my first ramadan's like i was fasting in secret and i had like no muslim family right and uh i think iftar time was like 10 30 p.m and i was like making this grilled chicken that was like this one piece of halal meat that i found in the local grocery store and my mom was kind of like why are you eating chicken at 11 p.m and there was no sense of community and there was no sense of belonging or anything like that and i just used to pray to god like one day please just grant me one person who gets me or like take me to a situation where i feel like i belong in an environment where i feel like i can exist confidently and freely and and alhamdulillah like it's so humbling 10 years later that's just one of my 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 prayers i um, there have been so, so, so many, 
And then if you start to realize all the prayers that God has answered in the previous years, I think that gives you a great sense of hope to go on um, and be grateful. Because I think the thing that we tend to do is, you know, make prayers and we're so passionate in our prayers. But then as soon as they're answered, we kind of forget and we don't even give thanks. We, we're not even like, oh, thank you for giving that to me. We're just like we continue on with our life as if as if nothing. Uh, and God never ever ever criticizes by the way that was in one of the lectures that I was listening to God never criticizes turning to him in moments of desperation even if you're someone who doesn't believe in that moment when you sincerely turn to him God never criticizes that what he criticizes is that you become that we become neglectful afterwards so if today you're looking for a sense of hope and you want to feel like your heart is full of joy then I encourage you to think about all the things you used to pray for that you now have and I hope that can give you some hope to go forward and that will put some positivity in your day today and if there's still prayers that have not been answered continue making them because just like you see your previous ones have been answered no matter how big or small they have been so keep praying and trust that God hears you and it there's beauty in just turning to him so that time when you are in that weak moment and you really do want that one thing that you're praying for so badly that in itself is a beautiful state to be in even though it feels so heavy on the heart it's actually when your heart is really close to god so that is one of the things that i learned in the past 10 days that i thought was beautiful and i just wanted to share with you as well and now it's really hot in the car because i turned off the ac so it wouldn't make noise but I live in Qatar where it's like so hot, so I need to take a break. Since I'm already here, because I think it's gonna be crazyville once I start cooking, um, another beautiful thing that I heard in the past couple of days and now it just came to my mind, is a practice to feel more closer to the community and the members of this community and like we are all one body, right? Um, so something really nice to do would be to pray for someone each and every single day of Ramadan. Of course, in the rest of the year as well, but let's speak about Ramadan in specific so not just like oh God bless her and I hope you know you have mercy on her dear God but actually choose a person every single day um, and dedicate a whole prayer to that person um, think about what would they really want or what do you think their heart yearns for or what do you think they're currently going through and actually make like a lengthy prayer for them and I thought that was such a nice thing. Uh, I've never thought about it that way. Like usually when someone pops into my mind, I say a quick prayer for them. But this way you kind of, I don't know, I feel like you become more tolerant and you become more like you put yourself in their shoes and what would they really want. And then praying for someone who doesn't know you're praying for them, I think is such a beautiful act of love. So if we want this community, and I definitely want this community to be united by, you know, kindness and love and none of this like drama and hatred and judgment and all that stuff. So I think a really nice way to feel like the togetherness of Ramadan, even though we're worlds apart, then like some of us are in crazy lockdowns and, you know, all of that stuff that's going on in the world, I think this would be something nice that could unite us even further. Um, yeah. So that's something else that I learned, not really learned, something that I heard and I thought it was a beautiful practice and I also wanted to share it with you. Now it is 424 and I need to go home and start cooking. So I'll see you there. Hello, hello from the kitchen. I am surprisingly on time because usually my husband always makes fun of me that whenever it's iftar time and it's time to eat, I get like extremely surprised. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's iftar now. Oh my God, I can't believe it, it's iftar. And I'm always late. So today, surprisingly, I'm on time. So I'm making es limon. If you guys don't know what es limon is, you'll find the recipe in my cooking highlights on Instagram. It's basically a dish I invented uh, a couple of years ago when I was just experimenting, when I was newlywed, trying to understand what my husband likes to eat, what I like to eat, what we like to eat together. And I perfected the recipe and so many of you have sent me messages that this is a family staple and you love it and your like family loves it and your kids love it. So that makes me happy because I love good food. Uh, so yeah, but surprisingly, I have not made it in like a year and a half. I used to make it like weekly at one point and then monthly at one point. So I don't really know what happened. So I have my fish marinating over here. I have potatoes in the oven. Everything's good to go. I just need to make a sauce and final preparations, set the table, and I think we're good to go. How's it going? 
<laughs> when in doubt, body pump. When in doubt, work out. Yep. Tantara. Oh ho! Look at that! T.S. Limon. Yep. It's been a while. Yeah. Tip for the guys when you get married, just eating is not enough. You have to celebrate that your wife cooked, clap, scream. Every single day is a celebration. Every time she cooks, it's a celebration. You understand? Yeah, so I'm ready. So, oh my god, the food is so good. You didn't taste it yet. Yes, it's already so good. That's very nice. I think you can conquer the world with this uh, dish. Okay, tell the people, what's this? Okay, this is a very civilized way of eating mangoes. Okay, no, but this is a Colombian mango. Colombia. Colombia. Haitham mm -hmm. used to live in Colombia. Is it good? Mm -hmm. And in the supermarket, I found Colombian mangoes, and mm -hmm. he says they're one of the best, and this is coming from like an Egyptian dude. Egyptians are very proud of their mangoes. Egyptians are proud of their mangoes. Yeah, and guafas and everything. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, one thing you cannot compare Egypt with mm -hmm. is... Guafa? Guefe. Guefe? Not guefe. Guefe. Guefe? Okay, but. Colombian mangoes. Colombian mangoes good. Better than Egyptian? Bazinga. Like, up there. Up there. In the same, in the same uh, league. So if you ever find some, get some. It's mm -hmm. good. Mm. And on, like if you're not on camera, you don't need. <laughs> Instagramable experience. Just like okay, show in. me how you would eat it otherwise. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'll zoom in on you. Mm -hmm. no, He's stay. trying to act civilized yeah, on camera. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay. <laughs> with a spoon. Mm -hmm. I've never seen you eat mango with a spoon mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I'll let you enjoy now. Mm -hmm. So, me and Haitham have an agreement. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're eating it messy. Yeah. So, me and Haitham have an agreement. Mm -hmm. I take mm -hmm. care of the food mm -hmm. three times a week. And then Haitham takes care of the food three times a week, and that one day is like miscellaneous. Mm. I don't have to cook, I provide a restaurant <laughs> experience. That's the only difference. So, yeah, on Haitham's days, mm -hmm. we usually order something. So, today was my day to cook. Tomorrow, we're and having. You choose to cook, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, I think we're having Senegalese food for the first time. I've never tried it before. Um, anyway, okay. See you guys soon. It is now 8.30 ish and it's time to pray the night prayers, Tarawih prayers. This is where we stopped yesterday and where we're gonna start reading from tonight. Me again in my fashionable outfit. Mm. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Yeah, very fashionable. Yeah, so now. What time is it? I can't see. 10. It's 10 o'clock. We yes. just finished our nightly prayers and mm -hmm. we're going to go for a walk to balance it out because we had lots of carbs today. Four or five K. Let's do this. No, not five K. Let's do it. Come on. Hello. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go for a walk before we call it a night. I'm not sure who is this reciter they're playing, but I really like his voice. Here he is. <laughs> I like his voice. Uh huh. Walk, walk, walk. How much have we finished? We've done two and a half so far. So, going strong. Two and a half to go. This is my only workout for the day. Haitham works out also before breaking fast. Yeah. But the nightly walk is my strength. Keep on. Yep. Suhoor part one. So. Haitham usually eats the leftovers before we go to sleep. You can conquer the world with this dish. 
I think it's better when it stays, no? It's unbelievable. Leftovers are better or is it fresh? Leftovers. Leftovers are better. Mm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Good morning. We slept a couple of hours and now we are awake for a few bites before the fasting starts again. I'm not fasting, I'm just kind of here for moral support. Haytham's having a croissant, yogurt, honey. What do you have here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you're awake at this hour anyway, then it's highly encouraged to make your own personal dua, your own personal prayers, whatever it is that your heart is longing for and yearning for, uh, to pray for that in the last third of the night. So definitely um, something to do. And if you're able to stay awake after prayer time until sunrise, that's an amazing um, time for worship as well. And uh, I don't think I'm that strong today, but if you guys are, then... Mashallah. Call to prayer should be any minute now. I don't know why I do the habit of looking at my watch when there's no watch here. Call to prayer is now actually. Let me show you. <laughs> So with this, it's time to pray and that would be the end of this vlog. That is one day in our Ramadan and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope God accepts everybody's fasting, everybody's worship and that you have a beautiful month.